So I was messing around with some clip art and just looking at different things. And this one caught my eye and I downloaded it from a website. And the main reason it caught my eye was that I thought, you know, that's an interesting kind of concept. But it reminded me of, um, and, and sparked the memory probably because it's bouncing around so much in the ether right now, for the Wheel of Time that it made me start thinking of not so much a Minotaur like this, but a Trolloc. And if you've never read The Will of Time, a Trolloc is basically this compiled beast that is part man, part creature, um, just killing machines kind of thing. So it made me think of that. And then it made me think of uh, the first Will of Time book, which I read forever ago. And that scene where they, there's a scene in it, so this is no spoiler, there's a scene in it that, that pretty much towards the very beginning where these creatures invade the uh, town um, and it's it's been a little bit but i believe it's two rivers um, that they invade and there's some other people there they fight and one of them that gets in the fight is tam uh tam al thor who is the father of the main character uh rand and so um Tam's always been one of my favorite characters, if not my favorite character. And so he, it made me think of that scene. Because there's a scene in it, like I said, where the, these creatures invade out of nowhere. He kind of knows it's coming. He senses it. Um, there's this big fight. He gets hurt and kind of goes from there. But So it made me think of that, but I didn't like just this clip art like this. So I took and I messed with it and contorted it and redrew it like this because these guys are much more hulking and much more um, contorted. So I decided to put ram's horns on it and then give him kind of a twisted malformed horn over here, make the axe bigger, make him bulkier and bigger and that kind of stuff. And then that made me start thinking, oh, well, you know, if I had this creature and he was fighting, it would be cool to see Tam in the background um, you know, like the village is on fire and all this other stuff. So I, I sketched this out and came up with this kind of concept where everything is kind of drawing down into Tam for the, um, uh, for the composition. So this guy's in the front, but your your everything is kind of drawing you to Tam over here, who is about to do battle with this guy and, um, defending his home and his son and everything else. So anyway, so this is where I'm at with this. Uh, I'm going to try and paint it up here in Art Rage and see you know, how it comes out and what I think about it. But I uh, wanted to kind of show you that and see where I'm going with it and that, you know, kind of what sparked the idea. So that's, you know, I like looking around at clip art stuff every now and then because it does kind of sometimes get the juices flowing for different ideas. And there's there are actually several other in there that I'm going to play around with and kind of contort. Um, some I thought I could just do like they were and um, use them almost like coloring pages to show you how to use different things in art rage and kind of go through that. But this one right here is, is really just a painting that I want to do. And I want to push myself cause I'm trying to do more uh, detailed and concept art type paintings. So I want to push myself to do this one and see how it turns out. It may turn out great. It may turn out like total junk. Who knows? But we'll see. So join me on this journey and we'll get going through it. So let's get started. Okay, so for the rest of this uh, overview of this painting, I've got it sped up and I'm doing this voiceover for it for a couple of reasons. One is the finished painting took me about four hours to do. The second one is, is that sporadically throughout it, my audio died. So the audio is just all messed up. So I figured out, well, I'll speed it up so we can kind of go through all the different techniques that went over and used. And then that way you can kind of see the whole thing without taking four hours of your time. <laughs> so, uh, so that's what we're going to do. So what I'm doing right here is I'm blocking in just the major color areas to kind of get an idea for where I want uh, stuff to be as far as like smoke and the village itself and all that kind of stuff. Cause I had an idea of how I wanted to have it laid out and kind of the rough idea of where I want stuff to be. I do change it some on the final piece as far as composition, 
but I wanted to uh, get it all laid out. So I took the square canvas brush and I used it to just really smudge in exactly where I wanted and start breaking down some of the highlights and some of the uh, shadows and that kind of stuff. I know I wanted this to be a thatched roof kind of looking thing and so I wanted to get that kind of scratched in as well and so that's what I'm doing here is just starting to lay in colors and shapes and really refining down some of the colors and some of the shapes so that way it's not just this blob but even right now you know just looking at that somebody could look at that and say oh that looks like fire it looks like buildings on fire so it's doing the majority of its job right now so the main thing I need to do at this point is start tightening up some of the edges start tightening up for where things are going to be some of the lights some of the darks and uh, pushing it again not going real uh, deep on the darkest darks and real light on the lightest lights but getting a good idea of where stuff is so that way I can get it laid out and see how it's going to look and if you've painted with me before you know I do underpaintings first so that's what I decided to do. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do that wasn't in my original sketch was I wanted to add some water kind of reflection because to me that adds a little bit more interest and then start uh, going in and adding some of the details and stuff of and by details I don't mean the final details again I mean like an idea of you know where is going to be what and how is it going to be laid out for the uh, the beginning foundation for the final look so um, so I'm using several different brushes here I use the chalk brush a lot and just the default one so whenever you select the chalk brush it usually loads into a just kind of a generic chalk brush until you select one of the presets and so that's what I was using and the pencil tool so using those a lot I am using some of my brushes from uh, that I have on Gumroad so if you want to get some of those you can do that and just trying to really go around and blend some of the different textures because I really wanted this to build up a layer of textures to try and get that uh, depth that dynamic feel to it but at the same time not let it get too busy so that's what I'm doing right here is is really just kind of adding textures adding it you know uh, layer upon layer of it now I only worked in about three layers for this whole thing I would uh, build a layer on top because one thing is, is when you're using the custom brushes a lot of times those heavily blend with the brush that's already been laid down with the paints already been laid down so they heavily blend so you have to make a layer on top of it to paint fresh paint so that way you're not smearing with what's underneath it and so that's why I tended to work in like three or four layers and then I would merge it back down and kind of keep going now one of the things that happened just there a second ago you saw where it kind of flashed into the line drawing that was me just checking to see okay if these guys are here how much of this background do you still see where they're at because I like the background uh, and the way it was starting to come together so I didn't want to hide it with the characters you know I want them to be a part of it and have it be kind of a seamless thing where they're part of it so that's what I was checking and that's what I continued to check and that's actually why I ended up kind of um, maneuvering them around and changing their size and changing their location because I wanted this very much uh, them to be some you know where you're finding stuff in the painting it's not just super obvious so it's like oh this is there this is there but instead it takes you a second to kind of piece it together because to me that's more interesting and so again that's what I'm doing here is looking at where are they at where do I need to lay them in for the actual ground and everything to make them participating in the ground and being a part of it using stencils so this is my pebble stencil that I have on Gumroad as well it's part of my uh, big pack that I have which I just finished making some new brushes for and I'll be adding that as well so if you don't have that you, you definitely want to check those out and then once I got the background you know 60% I said okay I need to kind of rough this guy in so that it can uh, give me an idea of how it's gonna look so and this is Tam 
like I said in the intro. Uh, it's my version of Tam. Tam is, uh, when we meet him in the story at the beginning, he is a, for the most part, a retired uh, soldier kind of thing. And so I wanted to kind of have that feel to him. So, uh, you know, I wanted it to look like he's kind of rough. He's kind of tired, you know, um, and so I wanted it to have that feeling of whereas he's tired and everything else, he's still, he's still got some game to him, you know, and so I'm trying to get that feel of it laid in and, and again, right now, not overly worrying about, um, the final, just getting it roughed in to say, okay, is this how I like the shadows? Is this how I'm going to like all that to be there to show his cut that's in his stomach? where he gets poisoned at the beginning and everything else. So, you know, just kind of seeing how that looks. And then from there, I said, okay, I need to block in this guy. And I knew I wanted him to be kind of a blackish blue kind of ram looking things because I think that really helps uh, with the darkness and, you know, because these guys are just evil. And so I started blocking it in and then uh, just take the selection tool and start doing a little bit faster with it and laying it in. Um, this is a process that's a little bit faster in Photoshop because I can just use more keyboard sh shortcuts there to do this, but it's still not bad uh, as far as here. My system, you can't really tell it because I've got this sped up, but my system was lagging for some reason, and it was just driving me crazy. It kept, like I would select something and then it would, it would be off from what I selected, and I'd have to deselect it and reselect it and everything else. So it's just... It was a real pain, and uh, it made it difficult to kind of keep track of where I was and what I was working on. Uh, it's not Art Rage's fault at all. It's my system and the recording that I'm doing. And so uh, I was having issues with it. So that's where I saved it uh, one of the first times. And then I started saving it even more in smaller chunks. So that way, just in case my system was going to crash, I actually ended up restarting my system twice. But, you know, I wanted to try and get it keep it moving forward so so again if you're going to do something black and dark you know so that it contrasts against all this light from the burning uh, you don't want to go with pure black because then where do you go from there for shadows you know so i'm um, using that old trick of if you've got black use blue uh, around it so that way you can still have some of it and i also when i started painting this guy I took a little bit more of his human stuff out of him, you know, by giving him some really rough and scruffy looking fur and that kind of stuff. But for right now, I just really wanted to get him laid in for the, the, the overall look uh, as far as, you know, uh, that blue laid in there. So that's what I'm doing right now. And the other reason for doing this is that you can see uh, from where I've got it laid in there, the... Um, other stuff is showing through, so I want to delete that. So what I'm doing right now is laying the base for what will be his fur and just stroking in some uh, darker color to kind of give me that indication, that first layer of indication of fur. And I use one of my uh, gouache, my old gouache brush to do this. I have several different ones that kind of do this old brush streaky kind of thing. The old gouache brush works really well. And but again, my system started lagging, so you'll see where this kind of takes. Uh, well, I, I see you'll see you may not because it's so sped up, but there is a section where it just starts becoming painful for me. Like right here, you see how it's jumping around a lot. You can even tell it's lagging behind it. Uh, the system was doing it again, so I had to restart my system again to do that. And that's again, that's part of why I sped this up, so that way you don't have to go through any of that stuff. But it was actually right. This actually, when I finished this part was where I noticed my microphone messed up the first time, and I'm not sure why. I don't. I mean, nothing's changed, nothing's been different, but for whatever reason, it said my microphone just stopped working. I have no idea why. So um, I decided, you know what, the rest of it I'm just going to paint and then come back and I'll do a voiceover uh, after I tried it again and it still was having issues. So I came back in to do this voiceover that we're doing right now kind of go through it. So again, laying in the flat tones. So there's a bunch of different ways to paint when it comes to digital painting. You can lay in flats like I'm doing here. 
and then come back and add your highlights and your shadows and everything else as well. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Uh, I, it just kind of depends on what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. But it's, it's a decent way to do it, you know, so don't be afraid of it or anything. It's just kind of a personal preference thing for what you want to do. I find for these busy things like this where it's got a lot of details, it kind of works better because then I can make sure I've got all the different things done. You know, like have I colored in everything that has to do with this trollic or am I missing something? And right now, again, I'm just laying in the basics for what I need. So none of this is the finished colors or the finished product. It's just going from the drawing to the rough to the next rough to the next to the next to the next and slowly refining it through and you know constantly saving and so what i'm doing right here is again trying to go back through and select all the flats that i made to get rid of all that extra drawing that's on the base layer for the um, rough sketch and trying to get rid of that uh, that other stuff. So this took a little bit of doing because, again, my system was being glitchy. It didn't want to work for the stuff I was doing, and it was just really annoying. But I finally got it to, to do it, and then I saved it. And then I was having issues with the layers changing themselves, like they would change from one level of multiply to another layer of level of multiply. And so I'm trying to get that figured out and switched here, and that's why you see me kind of shifting through stuff and undoing stuff and going back to doing it. It was just, it was just being uh, a pain, and I don't think it was Art Rage. Again, Art Rage is usually really stable. Um, that's one of the nice things about it is that it is a really stable program. But I think it was just my system for whatever reason was being just a pain. One of the things I did notice was that my system was actually in the background was running a virus scan. I didn't realize it. It usually does that late at night. Um, but it was deciding to do it a little bit earlier. So I think that's one of the main things it was doing is pulling too many resources. So this is where I start to go in and add in that extra fur to really rough him up and give him, you know, I picture these guys just vicious, lice infested, um, just nasty things. So I wanted to break up that silhouette so it's not as smooth and get it done up. So it, it really has that, that nice rough fur again. Now, consider the fact this is like sped up eight times and look how long it's taken it to save because it was just my, uh, it was driving me crazy. Um, so I saved it. Then I restarted my system and came back and started again. And, um, you know, it was just one of those things. But anyway, so I uh, wanted to play around with it. Now, one of the interesting things about these guys is that even though they're these creatures, uh, they have human eyes. And so they retain that. And, it's just kind of a interesting feat. Um, one thing here that once, since I saw that I just painted it in there, you'll see that little snaggle tooth there. I wanted to maybe show some fangs or something like that that might be a little bit more menacing. So I did that there, and then I came, you know, and I, I wanted to do some like froth spittle coming out of it, and so I did that. And when I got to the more finished piece, uh, towards the end of this video, I decided I hated it. And so I went back in and, and took it out. I, I didn't film that part because it was just, you know, it was just a few minutes of me taking that out. But um, again, one of the nice things about digital is that you have the capability to go in and change stuff and move it around. So that's what I did. But, and um, so one of the other things is if you've not read the Wheel of Time series, I really recommend it. It's a, you know, it's getting ready to go on Amazon Prime, which I'm, I'm happy and concerned about all at the same time because this is a really good series. And um, I'm looking forward to it. I think it would make a great series. And um, it'd be interesting to see how much it gets shortened because... Jordan was just notorious for describing everything to the nth degree, and now you'll be able to see it, so you won't have to spend all that time getting designed. But it's going to be interesting to see how it translates, how they do for translating it. So it's one of those things that could be fantastic, or it could really suck. And so I'm really just hopeful that they make it uh, where it's fantastic and they do it uh, justice, because all the characters in this, the way they develop, um, is just fantastic. You know, there's a, each, each one of the characters that you get to know in this really develops. 
And so I, I just, I'm looking forward to doing it. So, and like I said, I guess because that was bouncing around in my head of seeing the, the show on Amazon, it's been in the forefront of my brain. So when I was looking through some clip art, I saw that Minotaur and I thought, oh, hey, you know, it'd be kind of cool. And so this popped into my head almost instantly. And then I thought, okay, I'm going to redraw some of this and mess around with it and see if I can get it to where something I kind of like. And then from there, uh, turn it into a painting. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's been a while since I've read the book, read all the series. Um, I can't even remember if their village got torched, <laughs> but I liked this idea of this. And so I'm sure there's somewhere out there, there's somebody that's screaming that I don't have the Tam's sword right, or this wasn't exactly how it was done in the book, or, um, you know, something like that. Yeah, I don't care. I really don't. If, <laughs> if, if this bothers you that much, go watch something else. Uh, the point here is just doing a painting that's kind of an homage to a memory of a feeling of something that was there. And so Tam was one of my favorite characters, if not my favorite character and his backstory and stuff that we kind of get a, a glimpse of here and there. Uh, I just always liked his character. So uh, that's what this is, is that kind of first scene, that meeting with him from my viewpoint and wanting to see how that uh, progressed into a painting and, and doing that. So, so that's what I'm doing right here. It's just continuing to push and pull the highlights and the darks and getting a good feel for where it is. And, and I know this, a lot of this guy is in shadow and I had this, I've got this on three monitors, one monitor. It's really, uh, you know, dark one monitor. It looks good. The other monitor, it looks saturated. So I kind of have to get it to where it looks decent on all three. And then it's usually good for print and I'll have prints of this getting it all, you know, sorted out and figured out. So one of the other things was, was right here, making him, making them both be part of the environment so that they're in like this squishy mud and then playing around with the eye to get the reflection. So here's that spittle I was talking about, that frothy foam. Uh, it seemed like a good idea, you know, because I've seen like bulls get really agitated and they get all that froth and foam and everything else, but I don't know, it just didn't work. So, and then trying to get the reflections in the, in the axe. So it has that. I didn't want this to be a shiny axe per se, you know, not, not like something straight out of a armory, but instead something that's been just beat all to pieces and just looks uh, rough. So there's that fine line between for doing that, of giving it that shiny look, but at the same time giving it that bloody, this just got used to hack somebody in half kind of look but not have it be gory, you know? So that's what I'm doing here is just trying to play around with that and get the feel for that. And then start going into the highlights for him, for his loincloth, for his armor and everything else. And then once I got that done, it was time to focus on Tam and get some work done on him. Uh, again, the detail are just kind of, hints at details because he is in the background so i don't want everything completely defined on him and i do want it to have more uh you know you'd be able to tell what it is but at the same time i don't want it to be just super defined i want it to be that rough kind of look and kind of playing around with it to do it but this is one of the things also so i you know i gave him just a hint of a belly and in the book he gets uh, I believe it was cut in the abdomen. So I wanted to be like, what if that had already happened with this guy or something? You know, maybe he, it's just kind of that going after it to, to make a stand to really uh, drive in. And he's, you know, he's kind of rough, a little rough around the edges and worse for the wear and trying to do what he can to, to save his son and people in this village. And, um, you know, really kind of go after that. But, it, you know, having not been in the field and battle and everything else, it's, I wanted him to look rough and haggard. 
that's kind of what I captured here with this. Also wasn't sure of the color of his tunic. I do like the green and the brown because he's just kind of a simple man. And so he wouldn't have anything elaborate and ornate. Um, he would just kind of have this simple, you know, tunic and, and you know, that he had pulled over. And this could even be, as I was doing this, I was like, you know, this could even be like a, um, just a simple tea tunic. It could be a simple almost robe that he pulled around himself when these guys came along. And so just thinking about some different things with that of how, how that might look. And then right here, starting to lay in some of the wrappings and stuff on his leggings and all that. So, because the book, the series always kind of struck me as a, an interesting mix of people. So for me, that's kind of like some, some of the people are a little bit Middle Eastern. Some of the people are more Eastern. Some of the people are more Viking. Some of the people are more European. And so uh, that's why I kind of just went with a generic look for him. That was a generic Viking, Irish, Scottish, European, you know, mix kind of thing. So again, looking at the background and seeing uh, any details to add in. So I needed to make the fire hot and that's achieved by I made a layer, an overlay layer and started overlaying some yellowish white which then glows out that orange. And then once I had that on there, I took the palette knife, the smudge palette knife, uh, hard smudge, and smudged out the, the edges of the flame. And I thought that started looking pretty good. And this was one of the things that made me sit there and go, I was like, well, I've got this really cool looking background, but I want to have them not hide it all and have them kind of be more of the picture. So it's like, okay, where do I move them? And again, one of the great things about digital is that I can do that. And so I thought, okay, well, if I'm going to move them, then I need to kind of change the, both of their positions and keep the scale. So that's what I did here. And then I did, I realized that his snout lined up with the roof uh, here in just a minute. I realized that after I added in some of these extra uh, smoke and stuff. And so I changed him and move him again. But I thought this gave a really nice uh, painterly effect and really nice uh, smoke burning down and everything else kind of thing. And it also kind of helps vignette the characters into it. So that's what I'm doing here is putting that in with an overlay and a multiply layer. <coughs> Excuse me. So that way I can get the uh, clouds and stuff put in and adding in different textures and then softening it out with the palette knife so that it kind of blends in here and there, but not, you know, completely. So this is where I realized that his nose was lined up perfectly with the edge of the house. It just didn't look right. So I wanted to have him going a little bit off of the edge of the canvas at the bottom, but I, and I didn't want to lose his just massive hulking thing. So I, I made sure to uh, change it around just a little bit. So that you still have this same overall effect, but you know, I think it lines up better. So again, I wanted to add in some stuff and I realized right here that some of my smoke was getting rather, um, symmetrical. So I went back in and started breaking it up a little bit. That impasto brush gives a really nice effect on some of that. So one of the things here I was doing was I created a new layer and set it to multiply and wanted to deepen the colors a little bit more and get that kind of feel. So I did it to multiply, then I lightened it uh, as far as the opacity and then took the particle snow and threw in some embers floating around and then just made a couple different layers and set them to overlay and went it back in and painted in some of the white and yellow. So it gave that kind of a glowing ember as it was blowing through and then I erased some of it back. And then took the um, particles snow and used that to um, make some smaller embers and stuff. It gave a real good flowing, kind of blowing in the wind kind of thing. Added some extra highlights 
on the axe itself and then a little bit on Tam's sword. And then the other thing was I realized, okay, I want to add a little bit more on him, on this Trolloc. So I did that. And then I wanted to set them into it, so I just decided to add some grass and like that after adding a few more sparkles to the water and highlights to the fire and everything else to kind of really control your eye going around on stuff. added in the grass just the pen tool and there are a couple different layers of it although I realized one of the things was that um, about halfway through doing this grass I was like oh, I'm on the wrong layer I put it on the embers layer so I wanted to change that I wanted to add a little bit more fog and grass I mean not grass but fog and smoke behind the grass so that's what I'm doing here because I think it kind of helps push them into the environment a little more and gives that real feeling of um, just stuff going on. So I wanted, also wanted to add a little bit more dark texture to the uh, roof and to some of the other ones to kind of give that real feeling again of texture and stuff. So and I realized his cut there was too red. It looked like lipstick. So I wanted to add that in. I was trying to get it to look right and not be such a daunting red, but instead look like a blood stain. And I finally got that done. And then I wanted to put some on the um, Trolloc here, too. This is one of the things where I realized I put the grass on the wrong layer. And because I, I took a layer effect and made a, a glowing edge around them so that it really kind of uh, separated them from the background, gave them that backlighting. And, uh, but then some of the stuff I'd done earlier on the ground kind of looked odd, so I had to go paint it on another layer and then fix some of that and then fix his sword where it was, you know, standing out a little more. And then this is really just kind of coming on some of the touch-ups and the final things. Uh, just messing around with his fur, making sure it's all going the, the direction I want, throwing in some blood spatters on him getting that right because it looked too red um, and putting a little bit on the axe itself so that's kind of it I hope you've gotten something out of this I hope you've enjoyed it make sure to give me feedback on it you know do you want to see some more things like this do you is there something particularly have a question from on this painting or on another one um, so give me uh, some feedback on it, but I appreciate you sticking through this and listening to me as I kind of go over it and I hope you learned something out of it and thanks so much for watching it. Okay. So I wanted to show you real quick. Uh, one of the things, this is where I took out the spittle and kind of changed some stuff around and there's a few different things I need to do. I was talking to a friend of mine and he looked at this and he pointed out something to me that I didn't really, I don't know, it's one of those things, I guess you can see the trees for the forest or whatever, forest for the trees. Um, he said, this look awkward. <laughs> so, and after he pointed it out, I'm like, it, it kind of does. So we're going to change this real quick. Um, I don't know. Anyway, so let's just kind of change this I'm doing this on another layer like so because the original idea was to have it just kind of look like you know fur wrapped around and he said it looked um well, just a little awkward so and I was going for I want it to just look like you know another hide tucked over the belt A 
less awkward. Okay. I noticed was I cleaned up his sword and I forgot to go back and put it back behind. It's a small thing, but you know, it's important. Definitely better. Definitely better. Yeah, this is one of the things I'll probably live with it for a couple days to see what I think about it. But again, if you haven't read the book series, I recommend it. Give it a listen on Audible. It's fantastic. Uh, sit down and curl up and read it. It's a good book. Yeah, you'll like it if you're into fantasy type stuff and not the standard fantasy type stuff, but I think Jordan put it the best way. He said, you know, the fantasy where somebody comes into town and says, you're the chosen one, and you're like, um, tell you what, hang out here, I'll be right back, and then you run out the back door trying to get away. So, uh, it's just a... Uh, not your standard fare. So it is pretty neat. That'll work. All right. Thanks again for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.